जय जगन्नाथ साहे पंचस्तरी तम नेशनल वेबिनार रो समस्त दर्शक मान को नमस्कार आज ए जातीय स्तरीय आभासी आलोचना चक्र रे आम संगे रे जोग देबे आंध्र प्रदेश पडोसी राज्य आंध्र प्रदेश रो विजयनगर मडु जेने कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट से होचंती डॉक्टर चौधरी पीएससी एचपी बेनुगोपाल रेड्डी जी जी की सेंट जो नम इंडियन रेड क्रॉस एसोसिएशन से तो जड़ी तो तनु मोरो अनुरोध से इंग्लिश से टॉक देबे समस्त माने टिके कोऑपरेशन रही हो जेंती समस्त अंकर अ सम्माननीय समस्त ये चार नियम है आयुर्वेद के पहला नियम खाना खाने के एक घड़ी के बाद दूसरा नियम पानी को हमेशा घूट-घूट भर के पीना आ आ कहा को ऐड करे ना वर्तमान ठीक अछि हां स्वीटी आ कहा को ऐड करना तू जानि परनो से चली आस छथि ओके जय जगन्नाथ नीलाद्रो शंख मध्य सात दल कमले रत्न सिंहासनस्त सर्वालंकारयुत नवघन रुचिर संयुत जाग्रजेन भद्राय वाम भागे रथचरणयुत ब्रह्म रुद्रेन्द्र वन्य वेदनं सारमेसं सुजन परिवृतं ब्रह्मदारु स्मरामि परम कारुणिक अनंत कोटि ब्रह्मांडर मौळमणि कोटि कोटि उडियांकर हृदय आराध्य देवता समग्र विश्वचराचर रसस्थ आनंदकंद परमानंद अखिल रसघन विग्रह विश्व वेदनार वैद्य देवाधि देव श्री श्री जगन्नाथ शंकर चरण कमल रे ए अकिंचन रो कोटि कोटि धन्यवाद आई ऑफर माय रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबिशंस अनटू द लोटस फीट ऑफ आवर स्पिरिचुअल गुरु लॉर्ड श्री जगन्नाथ आई डॉक्टर नमिता पटनायक द असिस्टेंट स्टेट कमिश्नर लीडर ट्रेनर ओडिसा स्टेट बार स्काउट्स एंड गाइड एंड ऑनररी स्टेट training coordinator senjana mulan surisa on behalf of the marsi college of natural law the organizer over ranger unit i welcome all the participants to this google board and welcome to this 175 national webinar title being world first day observation on this auspicious day we are going to know about there are many uh, skills about this uh, first uh, world first aid day but we have chosen only the cpr one of the best life saving skill prior to that let us welcome our guest virtually
Dr. Benugopal, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, CHP uh, Benugopal Reddy sir, who is an MBBS practitioner doctor. Beside, he is a clinical cardiologist. He is a sore master trainer for first aid and disaster management from Indian Red Cross Society. And besides, he is also associated with the blood bank and he is the voluntary medical officer there in Vijayanagaram blood bank. And we have already welcomed him to this Google board. Now we are going to um, inaugurate our program. So for that reason, I request uh, respected principal ma'am, Manju Patnaik ma'am, the um, president of this webinar, uh, Dr. K.P. Mr. Sir, the State Chief Commissioner and Additional Commissioner, Sanyan Ambulance Brigade, Odisha, Mr. Jyoti Prakash Maharana Sir, the science teacher from Puri, and Ipshita um, Dibbansu, and all our respected guests from dignitaries, and especially our chief speaker of today, today uh, Mr. Reddy, Dr. Reddy. It's my proud privilege to welcome you all to this board. And now we are going to have our inaugural function. Now I'll request Dr. K.P. Misesa to inaugurate the webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All of us know that today, uh, although it has been already passed yesterday, we have uh, observing today because of Sunday, but. Uh, it's very important for all of us to know about fast aid. Just for the knowledge and information of all of us, I'll tell you the first aid is the first assistance or support given to a casualty or a sick person for any injury or sudden illness before the arrival of an ambulance or a qualified paramedical or medical portion or before arriving of a facility that can provide professional medical care. So it should be compatible with modern medical science. So our aim is to pre-apply, to promote the worsening of casual, to promote our recovery and to prevent the worsening of casualty condition and to help to ensure safe transportation to the nearest healthcare facilities. So this first aid, it is almost for all of us is very important to know not only to save ourselves but also to the public so when a person suffers from an injury or accident or the immediate help given by him or her is called first aid the person who has given uh, the first aid he must be a trained one he must be having some knowledge about first aid and the second saturday of september is always uh, all over the world is celebrated as world first aid day every year and today uh, we are observing the World First Aid Day 2023. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it has already started from yesterday, that is Saturday, 9th September. And uh, we are planning to observe it for one week. And the first aid is the basic skill. And everyone should uh, know and aware must provide to those in need. Most accidents and injuries, they are, co uh, they are cured if people provide first aid at the right time and the right place by a right portion. So while first aid day helps to aware people more of this primary care and everyone should know how to provide first aid correctly during accident and serious injuries. So this day help us to gain more knowledge about first aid and, and how we should react in different situations and everyone should learn basic of it and early age. So now we are having a friend from Andhra Pradesh Vijayanagaram, 
he will explain us and he will uh, there are uh, 20 to 26 uh, topics in fast aid once you have uh, interested to undergo the fast aid training you can contact Senior Ambulance Indian Red Cross Society and you can uh, go for a training uh, it uh, covers 16 hours training and both um, theory and practical and I got a chance to invite one of our friends uh, who is also a member of Indian Red Cross and Senior Ambulance and uh, he is here and we'll listen to him he will explain us about the CPR as he is a medical practitioner he will explain us better than us as a fast reader. we are fast aid lecturer but he is a more um, a powerful because he has got both medical practitioner uh, and he is a fast aid uh, lecturer so both the way he will explain us better the one of the life saving skill that is cpr the cardiopulmonary resuscitation now if uh, the bansu is there i'll request the bansu the bansu are you there no okay so ipsita ipsita right so now i'll request uh, dr benegopal ji to take chas the hand over i am handing over the chas to you sir now the floor is with you you can start over to benegopal ji yes sir uh, very good afternoon, madam. Uh, thank you yes, for the sir. warm introduction of me. And uh, everybody, everybody, good afternoon. Today, I am going to talk about, I have given this topic CPR. So uh, today, before going to the main topic, I just want to tell some introduction about this uh, um, World First Aid Day. As Madam said, Madam have given already the introduction about this uh, World First Aid Day very nicely. She is also an expert in about uh, conducting these programs and uh, um, doing the first aid procedures and all training parts in her place. Very nice meeting you, Madam, uh, after so many days. Right. So today is World First Aid Day. That is here. actually uh, on 9th September is the world first aid day this year because it is celebrated around the world in the second saturday of the september month every year from the year 2000 in the year 2000 it is first started by the international federation for red cross and red crescent uh, in the year 2000 and every year it is having some themes that are to be followed and uh, used so this year we have a theme for this world first aid day that is first aid in the digital world so which promotes the utilization of digital tools and resources that aid in the provision of first aid education so madam am i, am I audible hello madam yes sir you are very much audible yes sir you are very much audible okay thank you madam so okay uh, this is the theme the, with this year we are following that is first aid in the digital world and madam has rightly initiated this uh, uh, webinar by using this digital tool and uh, uh, the okay. theme is followed this year very much properly so by using this webinar we are following the theme madam mm -hmm. yes i have left over this uh, theme over to you that's right. <laughs> Digital, yes, you, uh, digitalization so, in fast aid. Digital. So are, yes, ma'am. So we are digitalizing this first aid this time uh, that uh, we are starting the topic uh, CPR. Before directly going to the CPR topic, we have to uh, give, some, I have to give a small introduction about life saving procedure. What is a life saving procedure? So, life saving procedure is nothing but how we have to initiate the first aid to a person who suddenly collapses or suddenly has got some problem or suddenly a person who is met with an accident in such situations how we have to initiate first aid is called the first aid procedure 
the procedure of life saving is very important because if you don't follow the life saving procedure systematically or properly you may hurt the victim or at least you can hurt you at least you will be hurting yourself so to avoid such situations we are following the life saving procedure which is very important so any person who will fall or who will collapse or who will who is met with an accident or any such emergency situation has occurred we have to follow this life saving procedure by following a small small formula actually we have a very small formula by which we have to uh, do the life saving procedure in which uh, in a very systematic manner so for doing this life saving procedure in a systematic manner the, for the this is the formula that we have to use what is that formula I mean first of all per se in an example if someone is got uh, touched with the electric wire and got current current shock suddenly the person falls what will you do some people who don't know the systematic first aid directly goes and touches the victim if that happens what will happen to the first aider or the person who is going to do the first aid he will also get get the current shock and he will also fall and he will also become the victim so this type of things to get avoided we have to follow this life saving procedure in a systematic manner the first rule is d d means danger what is danger danger is for whom for the casual for the victim or for the first aider the danger is for the first aider the first aider is the person who is going to do the first aid to the victim so the first aider should be in a very careful manner that the danger at the dangers and the danger item around the victim should be removed first physically how will you remove in suppose in case of the electrocuted patient person we are talking about now so if some person got electric shock and he fall down or he collapsed down what will you do you have to first off the switch of the main and then you have to remove the current wire or the source of the electricity by uh, uh, dry item or a dry stick or a plastic pipe something like that so if you remove that the danger item is lost and then we will be doing the next next step of the life saving procedure what is the next step after the first step is danger that is removing the danger item around the victim the second step is r r is the response what is the response for whom the response is ch checked the response is seen to the victim how the victim is responding we have to know the response of the victim by some small procedures what are the how can you see the response of the victim tell can I, so the response can be seen by talking touching and pinch in a general manner now i am telling but when we go to the cpr i will be telling in detail about the uh, response procedure also right so with by knowing the response we have to know we will be knowing the situation of the victim so uh, we have to check the response of the victim how will you check the response of the victim means there are some small tricks small tips so first of all we have to ask the victim we have to call the victim how are you what are you what is your name we have to so that we have to ask some questions to the victim so that victim is if the victim is already uh, is not conscious not uh, unconscious that means if the victim is conscious he will be definitely responding to your questions if that is not happening if the response is not seen by talk then we have to go for the touch touch means what will you do so you will be going near to the victim and then we have to tap the shoulders of the victim if you tap the shoulders of the victim if at all he is sleeping or less unconscious he will definitely wake up by the touch and by the tap on the shoulders and then you can know whether he is conscious or unconscious so after the if the if the victim even at that situation if he did not respond then what we have to do the next thing is pinch so we have to pinch the lobes of ears so that if the 
if the victim is at least a little bit conscious he will be waking up and he will become fully conscious so in this way we have to check the response of the victim so when you check the response of the victim we will be knowing we will be coming to a conclusion that that whether the victim is conscious or non conscious that is unconscious so what happens is if the victim is unconscious what will you do so what we will do we will just immediately go to the next step of the life saving procedure formula the next formula step is c that is call for the ambulance how will you call the ambulance like if you can uh, you being a single person who is going to attend for the first aid that is you are going to first aid do the first aid can you only do all the procedures all the steps no you have to take the help of the some uh, some uh, another person sur surrounding you so how will you take the help by uh, by calling him by asking him to call the and call for the ambulance you have to ask him in such a way that you call you have to tell him to call the ambulance and respond and tell me when is the ambulance going to come back right come here so by this we will be having the confirmation that the ambulance will be coming in some time that is it may be coming in 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes you have to know because if you don't ask particularly if some some person is calling you might be thinking that that person is calling and ambulance is coming but you are doing the first aid you will not you will, the ambulance will never arrive if the confirmation is not done so for that reason we have to take the confirmation of the person who is calling the ambulance in this way we have to finish the third step the next step is while we are going after the um, danger response and call for the ambulance is over next we have to go for the next step that is we have to check the airway of the victim how will you check the airway of the victim so when the victim is lying down on a flat surface okay then we have to make the surrounding people generally people surround when these type of incidents occur so when these type of incidents are, are have occurred many people surrounding the victim will be causing inconvenience by decreasing the air fresh air around the victim so for that reason what we have to do is we have to make the surrounding persons go a little little farer from the victim so that the fresh air will be coming to the victim so that he will he can breathe betterly so after that we have to make a small <clears throat> we have to make a small movement right so uh, while checking the airway first of all the the victim who is lying in a flat surface for flat surface the chin of the victim should be little raised and the mouth the mouth should be little opened like this so that the airway will be free what is the airway actually the airway is nothing but the from the it starts from the nose or the mouth and it goes through the trachea and to the finally to the lungs so this is the airway the airway should be open so that the breathing will be easier so to ensure the open airway we have to do the following things that is number 1 we have to raise the chin by raising the chin the throat is set free and the by opening the mouth the the airway from the mouth region will, will be opened so with this airway step we are ensuring that the airway open okay so this is the uh, step that is a fourth step that is ensuring open airway next step is breathing how to breathe like how to check the breathing of the victim we have to know how to check the breathing of the victim the breathing of the victim can be checked by three different ways one is first by observing by observing the abdomen or the chest part in a in a flatly lying person by observing the chest part or the abdomen part 
that the stomach part if the abdomen or the chest part is slightly up rising up and down then we can understand that the um, victim is breathing in some cases the victim even though is breathing the rays of the chest or the rays of the abdomen cannot be seen properly in such situations what we have to do is we have to keep the ear our ear near the uh, nose of the victim so that if at all thus there is a small breathing and that can be heard by the ear of the first aider therefore by checking the breathing in such way we can know whether the victim is taking breathing or not or even we can feel in such situations even the smallest air coming from the nose of the victim can be felt near the cheek by, by the cheek region of us with this situation with this uh, procedure we can know whether the victim is breathing or not what will we do if the victim is breathing or what will we do if the victim is not breathing this is a very important step in this life saving procedure right so this is a very important step in the life saving procedure that if the victim is breathing that means what it means it is the, the victim is live okay the victim has life and he is breathing properly so what exactly we required to do at this particular juncture is we have to keep that patient with uh, that victim in a recovery position okay recovery position is a different topic actually we can keep the recovery position is kept so that the victim can be easily recovered without any problem right so the person the victim if the breathing is there for the victim then we can keep in the recovery position if the victim is not breathing or not properly breathing then then what we have to do that is very important that is the most important uh, juncture what we have to decide whether we have to go for keep we have to keep the victim in a recovery position or we have to keep the victim in a, uh, in a we have to go for cpr right so if the victim is breathing we can go for recovery position and if the victim is not breathing then we have to start the procedure called cpr and we can check another procedure called pulse pulse also we can see the pulse in the uh, uh, near the neck by keeping the hand like this one way this right side or left side any way we can keep by keeping that way we will be knowing the pulse near the neck by which we can confirm whether whether the patient the victim is having life or not right so this is a life saving procedure everyone have to follow to do a, to do the first aid in a very systematic manner right so this systematic manner that is life saving process is very important by by telling this now i will go to the next most important and our today's topic that is cpr so what is cpr what is cpr cpr the full form of cpr is cardio pulmonary resuscitation we can just uh, the, we can uh, easily divide that cpr into three parts and we can easily understand what is the meaning of cpr what is the cpr cpr means cardio pulmonary resuscitation cardio means the first letter the first word is cardio which means heart next p is pulmonary what is pulmonary that means lungs resuscitation means reviving the meaning of cpr is it is the reviving re reviving the heart and lungs together is called cpr by doing a procedure that is cpr procedure right so reviving someone who is unconscious or not breathing or not breathing normally is called resuscitation and if the victim is not breathing or not breathing normally any source of suffocation first of all any source of suffocation should be removed and resuscitate and resuscitation is to be started that is important right so in cpr what we are doing means we are doing 
two two things one is chest compression and two is rescue breaths rescue breaths okay so chest compressions with or without rescue breathing are performed by an i in performed by an individual during cardiopulmonary resuscitation in an attempt to restore spontaneous circulation what is a spontaneous circulation that is if cpr is we are doing cpr that means that the, the victim is not breathing pal pal properly and not having pulse means the spontaneous circulation has stopped by doing the cpr we are initiating the spontaneous circulation in a, we are attempting to restore the spontaneous cir circulation okay for an untrained or minimally trained first aid provider training an adult victim tra treating an adult victim compression only cpr is recommended what is what is compression only cpr the cpr which can be done without giving the rescue breaths by only giving cpr means chest compressions is called compression only cpr okay <clears throat> but this chest compressions the compression only cpr ensures a small but crucial supply of the blood to the heart and the brain that is why this is also having some importance right but for a formally trained first aid provider who are uh, professionals tra uh, treating an adult victim compressions with breathing is recommended it is the trained first aid provider is uh, if the if the trained first aid provider is unable or unwilling or in any other circumstances compression only cpr may be substituted by the for compressions with breaths right so this is about the basic information about cpr so how do you go for a cpr where well, i have already told you that uh, the life saving procedure we have the following steps called the danger the response the call for ambulance the airway the breathing the pulse okay uh, the circulation right so if these all steps after you follow the life saving procedure when you have come to a such a conclusion that cpr has to be done when will you do the cpr the cpr will be done only when the when the victim is not breathing and don't have the circulation then we have to go for the cpr so cpr can be done in such situation so in ca in case of a so yes, in case of a uh, sudden collapse or loss of conscious and breathing then we have to start the cpr right benugopal ji right so i have how, share, i have said i have said the uh, chest compression you can uh, you can uh, just uh, tell about this thing compression okay madam right so this is the this is the way we have to keep the we have to do the cpr the procedure is i, I will tell madam little later i will tell, tell something okay. about the okay. uh, responsiveness and then yeah. you keep that like that and no issues yeah it's with you in your whatsapp and uh, okay. again share it if you will tell ha huh. please yes madam please carry on <clears throat> so in particularly about doing cpr how to observe, observe the responsiveness and consciousness that is also very important without which you have you have you can you cannot come to a conclusion that you have to do cpr without this right so in case of a cardiac arrest that is the uh, the heart stops functioning you might notice the following symptoms so a sudden a sudden collapse can be seen loss of consciousness can be seen the breathing will be stopped and there will be no pulse where will you see for the pulps you can see here there are different pulses you can observe the radial pulse here in the hand and of yeah. course we can see in the carotid pulse carotid. in the neck right so you have you can see different type of pulses but we, the most commonly observed pulse is near the neck it is very easily seen so that uh, you can observe and you can know whether the circulation spontaneous circulation is going or or not okay so 
the observation the response of the consciousness can be seen by a scale called avpu scale in detail there is an avpu scale in which you can see the a a means alertness what the e is the victim alert or not the person is fully awake although not necessarily oriented then the person will spontaneously open eyes will res uh, will respond to voice and it will have bodily motor function right if the patient is if the victim is alert the person will be fully awake and the spontaneous eyes will be open and everything will be there if the alertness is not there then we have to go for the next step that is called v v means responding to voice so avpu scale first one is a if the patient if the victim is not alert then we have to go for the v that is responding to voice whether the victim is responding to voice or not the person makes some kind of response when you talk to him so previously in the life saving procedure i have told about to talk and all these things so in the same way in detail when we are going to this cpr we have to go for the avpu scale the v v, v is the responding to the voice then when the person makes some kind of response when we, uh, then you will talk to him if the person is not making any response by your voice by how will you do, uh, do the rest, uh, voice means you will be calling him what is your name okay you will call him what is your name what is uh, what is, where is your house we can ask certain questions by asking some question what happens is if he if the person is uh, he can respond he will definitely respond and we can think that he is responding if he is not responding then we have to go for the next step that is p avpu scale that is p what is p responding to pain whether the whether the victim is responding to the pain or not the person makes a response or any kind of application of by any kind of application of pain stimulus such as central pain stimulus like rub in the breast bone this is the breast bone if you rub like this then you will be the person will move or the person will move or at least uh, the person the victim will respond if the, if the if he can respond if not you can just squeeze the fingers or uh, like this you can squeeze the fingers or you can just uh, hold the hand tight in this way also yeah. you can directly open uh, directly know whether the person the victim is responding or not and finally you you means unresponsiveness also noted as unconsciousness by doing avpu scale the alert the voice response the pain response if all the responses are not there then we come to a conclusion that the victim is unresponsive and unconscious right so at this situation <clears throat> at this situation this the we we declare or we come to a conclusion that the victim is unresponsive or unconscious okay so when when this when this situation is arrived then we have to go for the next step that is <coughs> that, that is uh, after calling for the ambulance then we have to go for the airway breathing and finally pulse also can be seen so how to observe the breathing how to observe, how do we observe the breathing the airway may be narrowed or blocked making breathing noisy or impossible so reasons for blockage may be many things loss of muscular control or loss of reflexes or any foreign particle is there in the throat these are all the reasons which can stop the breathing of the victim okay so what we have to do in the airway clearing is already i have ten, uh, told in the life saving procedure that we have to raise the chin of the flatly lying victim and then we have to open the mouth okay lift the chin forward with the index finger and middle finger and one hand while pressing the forehead backwards we have to press the forehead backwards with the with the palm of the other hand the maneuver will lift the turn forward and clean the airway this is more important right after opening the victim's airway check to see if the victim is breathing then we have to go for the next one that is breathing observe breathing by listening feel 
and looking. There are do, three steps. I do you have? Told. Do you have the dummy? Do you have the dummy with you? No. No, no. madam. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is <laughs> just a webinar. I did not keep all such things. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Madam, you we'll can do the picture. Yes. You have the. You have kept the picture, no? One one picture. The, Please keep uh, the picture. The one just now you huh. have kept, no, madam? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Are you able to see? Uh, no? No, madam. No. no. Okay, okay. Just a minute. Okay. Setting, setting. Okay. Yes. Now you can see. Yes, ma'am. So, so after opening uh, this, uh, so breathing is checked in three ways. That is by listening, by feeling, and looking. This should be done quickly, maximum ten seconds. So this is a life-saving procedure, and sh this should be done very quickly. So that uh, for ten in seconds. this webinar, I am telling slowly means that doesn't mean that you have to tell you have to do all this procedure very slowly. No, you have to do everything in a very speed manner. That is, you have to take maximum of uh, ten seconds for checking the breathing and all these things. Right. So in yeah. this way, you will be checking the breathing by listening, feeling and looking. How will you listen to the breathing? By keeping your ear, ear near the victim's uh, nose. And feeling is by feeling the air of the uh, air coming from the victim's nose by your cheek so that you can feel the breathing. And by looking, that is by observing the abdomen, that is stomach part or the chest part up and down the movements. By looking at that, you can understand whether the victim is breathing or not. But this should be done very quickly. That is a maximum of 10 seconds. You have to finish your things. <clears throat> right? So you can see the picture that Madam has kept in this webinar. The, uh, the position of the CPR doing person should be in that way. Okay, so the victim is lied down on the flat surface. Okay, the in the flat surface, and the first aider is is just keeping her knees down beside the victim, and she is uh, leaning forward by inter by keeping her both hands in this position. See, this is the position you have to take. You have to keep one hand like this, and we have to keep another. Uh, hand by interlocking the fingers and you have to keep this now i will show you how you have to keep your position of your upper arms that is see this is the way you have to keep this joint that is elbow joint should be straight enough that it should not have any bendings and it should be stiff enough right so this way you have to keep the two hands one hand on the other and you have to interlock the fingers like this and this is the base of the palm, which you will be keeping on the center of the chest. As shown in the picture here, you have to keep this uh, interlocked fingers and the base of the palm, one palm, should be placed on the center of the chest as shown in the figure. Okay, so this is a very important step. And you, when you keep your hands like this, the elbow should be straight enough that you have to feel this as the whole single unit. Okay, there should not be any bendings in this joint. It should be straight and firm, strong enough, right? So, and uh, the shoulder, the shoulder should come on to the center of the chest in a very perpendicular manner, as shown in the diagram and as shown in the picture. Here, the shoulder is coming to the uh, perpendicular to the ground that is on to the center of the chest that is the important uh, position that you have to keep so that the cpr can, can be done right so then the cpr has two parts that is chest compressions and rescue breaths what uh, how do you do chest compressions like how many chest compressions you have to do? 
how much time you have to do. All these things are there. See, there is a standard thing that you have to follow while doing CPR. The two parts of the CPR are chest compressions and rescue breaths. Number one, the chest compressions should be done by this position that I have already told you now. The position is you have to keep the two, finger, two hands like this, interlock the fingers, keep the hands straight, and then you have to uh, keep your shoulder, shoulder on the center of the uh, straight in the shoulder uh, now center of see. the chest you have to keep. yes yes so now you can see picture. yeah yes yes ma'am so this is the picture showing that yeah this is the picture showing that the chin is make, made forward by keeping one hand on the forehead and another two fingers that is index finger and middle finger that is used to raise the chin and the other hand is kept on head the forehead head tilted and head. this is Madam? head tilted down position this is head tilted down yes, position uh, chin up yeah yes Yes, ma'am. So the, the head wow. tilting should be done this in a very smooth manner so that the chin is raised and the mouth should be opened a little so that the airway is open, right? This way. So this after finishing one. this, we are coming to the, madam. This is this is second one, uh, opening the mouth. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Opening the mouth. Yes, opening okay. the mouth. So, OK. Yes. And and this is uh, uh, so can, uh, cleaning the mouth, cleaning the mouth. Yeah. Yes. That and is finally, the, how to the... show the car carotid pulse. Yes. You can show the carotid pulse. Carotid pulse. How to see the carotid pulse is uh, it is shown in the picture in this webinar, right? So by following these procedures, we will we have to come to the conclusion that the victim is not breathing properly. So we have to do the CPR. The CPR has the following two steps. That is, one is chest compressions and another one is rescue breaths. So see, the picture shows how you have to keep the hands on the center of the chest. There is a mannequin kept in this picture, seen in the picture, on the mannequin, the center of the chest is taken and the, the base of the palm is kept on the center of the chest. By keeping such in such position, we can do the CPR in a proper manner and the elbow should be straight enough, okay, and stretched fully and it should be straight enough and the shoulder should come on to the exactly onto the center of the chest that is perpendicular to the ground so in this position we have to do the cpr and the cpr having two important steps that is the chest compressions and also the rescue breaths the chest compressions are done by uh, in this position and the number of chest compressions are 30. So by doing chest compressions 30 in number, one after the other, then we can finish the first part of the uh, CPR, that is chest compressions. So how much speed we have to uh, we have to do the chest compressions means the speed should be between 100 and 120 chest compressions per minute. That is approximately in one second time, you have to do two chest compressions. So in that way, we can do the chest compressions. So by doing chest compressions, 30 in number, one after the other, we have to push, we have to compress the chest to one third of its thickness. Generally, the thickness of the chest from the front to the back, it will be around six inches. Then we have to compress the chest for two inches so that it can be compressed for one third and that is uh, the, that is the way that we have to compress the chest so how much speed means it is 100 to 120 compressions per minute and the how much depth we have to how much thick, uh, down we have to compress means it is one third of the, the thickness of the chest that is the way we have to give the compressions so 
uh, <clears throat> it is total 13 number and we are all we also have to notice important thing that once the chest compression is done that has to recoil properly so that the uh, the chest compression will be useful to the victim so without doing the without uh, recoiling the compressed hands we, you should not do the cpr while doing the cpr it is very important to observe that the cpr the compression done on the center of the chest should completely recoil so that the sec next compression will come right so while doing this chest compression it is very important you have to follow this right so chest compression with the speed of 100 to 120 chest compressions per minute and the depth is one third one third of the chest the chest thickness and uh, the recoil must be there the recoil of the uh, compression should be there the, it should completely recoil out, outward and then we have to finish it so <clears throat> after finishing this chest compressions what you have to do is you have to give the rescue breaths what is rescue breaths how you have to give the rescue breaths Madam, do you have any picture for that? Uh, I'm searching. <laughs> Digitalization okay. practice. Okay. <laughs> yes. So after giving the chest compressions, 13 number, one third of the depth, and pro with proper recoil, then you have to go for the next step, that is rescue breaths. How you have to give rescue breaths? Rescue breaths are given. The victim mouth is open. I already told that while uh, lying lying down the victim, we have to raise the chin by putting one hand in the on the forehead and two fingers near the chin. And we have to raise the head like this and open the mouth. After opening the mouth, we have to keep one barrier, some cloth or kerchief or something, whatever you have, you have to keep the kerchief on the mouth. And then with the, with the hand, one on the forehead, you have to pitch the nose and through the barrier you have to give mouth to mouth breathing by after taking uh, an inhalation right so that you have to give one full rescue breath by using the um, barrier and closing the nose opening the mouth you will be giving the uh, rescue breath like in this way you have to give two rescue breaths one after the other so the CPR will have the two parts of the CPR. That is one, first one is chest compressions. That is 13 number, one third in depth and a full recoil. And the next one is two rescue breaths should be given. The two rescue breaths uh, after the 30 chest compressions should be finished. So 30 compressions after two rescue breaths. This is one cycle of CPR. So this one cycle of cpr should be repeated minimum of five times and after that you have to continue so this cpr when you finish this one cycle after you uh, you, you have to do minimum of five times and then check for the response right so this is the proper way of doing cpr and uh, after this if you check for the response if at all the victim is awakened or uh, is getting up or giving any response, then it is the one of the best results that you have done. So that doesn't mean that every time that she, the, the victim gets up awakes immediately after you doing the CPR. That need not happen. So the most important thing is you have to continue even after the CPR is done five times after checking whether the victim is awake or not. So after doing repeated times, at one point of the time, the victim may respond and respond, and then he may get up. So at that point of the time, you can stop the CPR and check and see the next thing. So if the, if the victim, after you doing the CPR, breathes, then we'll stop the CPR and we see for the next response to happen if at all in some cases even though you do for much, uh, many times of the cpr if the patient is not responding then what you have to do is you have to you already while doing the uh, while we are talking about the life saving procedures we have called the ambulance we have called the ambulance so if the ambulance have already come then we have to hand over the victim to the ambulance that is the medical team which have arrived 
So in this picture, let us see in the picture, Madam have kept one picture in which the rescue breaths, how to do rescue breath is shown. So one person is lifting the chin with two hand, two fingers, and one person, uh, the, the other hand, the, it is kept on the forehead and the lift, uh, chin is lifted and the mouth is opened. Okay, by be keeping a barrier, we can give the mouth to mouth breathing in this way as shown in the picture. Yes. So this way we can see how to give the rescue breaths. So one after the other, one. 30 rescue breaths. Uh, yes. You can yes, you can explain this one also, how cleaning the face and how two breaths are given in this. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible, so, sir? In the first picture. OK. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. It is visible. So in the first picture, it is it is showing that one person is giving rescue breath to the adult female and in the second picture it is given to the small child so anyways the common thing is two rescue breaths fully given after the compression he finishes one cycle of the cpr so after finishing the cpr procedure and the repeated cycles of cpr then we will be waiting for the response to come from the victim or we have to give the uh, handover the victim the victim to the medical team which have arrived in the ambulance if at all there is a chance of uh, the victim not being recovered or the victim is not the and uh, the the medical team also will not be arrived but when will you stop you can stop this only when you are completely tired and if you are not if you are not getting the response also if you are tired you can't continue this and you can you may stop that way at that point and you can make other person who is sitting beside you who knows the first aid you can hand over the uh, you can make the other person do the same continuous procedure of cpr till the medical team arrives or the victim becomes normal right so in this way we will be finishing the cpr and uh, the CPR position or the CPR uh, procedure is very important. This procedure is, in, is very important in uh, saving the lives of many people if the CPR is done at particularly important time. That is, immediately after the collapse of the victim, if you do the CPR, there are many a chances that you can save the life of the victim. So in this way, we can do the CPR. This is CPR. And uh, how to do CPR for children? The next thing is how to do, do CPR for children. This, uh, to do CPR for children, the uh, CPR, the procedure, the main procedure is same for even the children. But the only thing that you need to do is three fingers of the hand can be, uh, can be kept on the on the center of the chest for small small children okay and uh, if if they are adolescent or younger children then you can use even the single hand can be used right so as the, in the picture it is shown the two fingers are kept on the center of the chest of the child so that by for doing the cpr the the, the child is kept on the flat surface and the had this supported by the one hand and the two fingers are kept on the center of the chest and it is uh, given the chest compressions 30 in number one after the other and after that you have to give uh, rescue breaths rescue breaths are given for children particularly for children for giving res uh, rescue breaths you have to use the mouth and even the nose also you can use and you have to keep your mouth on the mouth and nose of the children and then you have to give the respiration because it is a very small part of the baby and you can't separately give only to the mouth so you can use the nose also without closing the nose in this way you can give the cpr to the children right the remaining procedure is same even for the children or the adults but the only thing is that you have to use 
the, you have to use small uh, two fingers for the children and two hands for the adults and for the younger children you have to use single hand you can use the single hand and give the chest compressions this way by doing this cpr you can save save the life of the victim in any manner right so this is an important procedure that you can follow and practice so that uh, this is uh, you can save the life of your loved ones sometimes it may happen to any people beside you or any people right so the picture shown here the people are practicing on the mannequin the first picture is showing that the they are keeping both the hands that is two hands the base of the palm is kept on the center of the mannequin and the, the chest compressions are given that in the second picture the one of one lady is trying to give the CP chest compressions to the mannequin. So this is the learning procedure. You have to learn by using the mannequins. If you go to your Red Cross or this is St. John Ambulance Play uh, Centers, you can get these mannequins and you can go and practice how to do CPR the way, the way I have told you. So you have the material, you have the mannequins, and you can go, the, if you have some time, if you use the time and go and practice in the centers, they can, then you can definitely use this procedure to save your some person or even sometimes your loved persons. So this is very important procedure. This is important life-saving procedure. In many a times this was used and that can be saving lives. And uh, what what uh, what not to do? Please tell what not to do. If a person is live, we cannot practice that thing. No? We can uh, uh, when a person is live, uh, we can't apply this uh, CPR on a live person. Yeah, while while you are learning, so while you are learning, never learn. CP, doing CPR, that is CPR procedure on a live person. That is no, you never do that. Okay, Be, because if you try to learn something by doing on the live person, you can definitely hurt that person, or sometimes you, you can you can even take the life of that person also. So it is very important. You never try to learn CPR on a live person. You only try to learn the CPR procedure on the mannequin that is present in our Red Cross office or the St. John's Ambulance office. Okay, that is very important, right? So at the out, no, uh, at the final, uh, at the. This, uh, this is the final. This is the final picture for World First Aid Day. What we have to learn, uh, the summary of the First Aid Day. You can explain. Yes, 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 madam. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so this is the summary of the first eight day. The, in this, uh, there are some sixteen pictures shown in the uh, photograph. That is one thing is first one that is giving rescue breaks. The first the person is giving rescue breaks to the second person. And secondly, <clears throat> in the second picture. Uh, one person is trying to keep in the recovery position and in the third position. So these are other procedures, actually not only CPR, this is like uh, in a fracture condition, how to do procedures that are shown. The Actually, as Madam said, in first aid, we have different procedures for doing first aid in different situations. So this is the picture in which we can we are doing different different procedures for the persons. One, if, the, if a person got fractured, the, the bone is got fractured, then we can use different steps, different ways of giving, doing bandages, and different ways of uh, 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 making the person uh, taken to the hospital by the stretchers, by rescuing techniques, and different different rescuing techniques are kept is are shown in this picture. You can just see one first one is uh, giving rescue breath. Second one is tying up, tying the bandages. Third one is also tying the proper bandage for the forearm. And the uh, next one is uh, rescuing the person. How to transport the person to the hospital? 
and the other procedures uh, bleeding when some bleeding occurs how to do bandages and uh, other structured persons other uh, and the last but one picture is shown in which uh, a person is doing a maneuver for the uh, choking actually when choking happens thus that is the procedure which is you which is done yeah. to the victim yeah. and later the yeah. how to transport the victim is also shown in the last picture madam any other pictures is, you uh, have yeah uh, just this is the last picture i have collected just now and uh, here uh, mm -hmm. something uh, they can guess one one uh, person is there only one first aider and the la in the last there are two person so when there is one person yes, how yes. they are carrying and when there is one person how they are lifting uh, that i want to say and here the, in the second yes, line first picture yeah, here the, he is uh, checking the um, breathing he is checking the breathing at yes, the same time, looking uh, at the corner wise, yeah, and a single uh, how he is putting the leg on his own leg and uh, carrying the patient, and being a lady, he is not, um, uh, he is not afraid of uh, whether I will be able to pick him up or not, but he is trying how to pick him up. Being a single first aider, how he is picking up, where to stand, that is the thing, and how to carry like pick a bag like um, cradle this is human cradle sure this yes, is all ma about first aid first aid means ma there are more uh, so many things are there and how we have to carry all these things dealing with an emergency is very important so i'll conclude with that when you will stop i will conclude with that okay sir yes madam you can now conclude uh, yeah okay i'm stopping this uh, okay so dealing with an emergency is very important for all of us because we have certain responsibility as a first aider first is we have to rush to the spot and second when we rush to the spot what do we have to see make ourselves safe make the area safe or scene safety then make the casualty safety then we have to do Three points, uh, look after the three points. That is, evaluate the injured person condition, examine from head to toe, both primary and secondary, and quick assessment. What I have to do? Quick assessment. Then number three. And all these are within 10 seconds. Whatever Sarah has already given. Uh, the third part is very important. When the person, uh, when you ask for permission and he, uh, he has given you permission, please carry on. Then immediately you seek for help and call for ambulance. Then continue with the treatment. But that treatment should be immediate, appropriate, and adequate. Remember these three words, immediate, appropriate, and adequate. So till the medical aid is available, you have to continue with the treatment. So thank you very much. Even if Sar has told very nicely how to take care of Another, uh, if a person is there and you are asking for an ambulance and CPR is going on, you might be very tired. After even if you cannot able to finish up all the five circle. Uh, so after one or two also, you will be tired. So don't worry. Take the help of a person who is standing beh behind or uh, adjacent to you and ask him, please practice or do how I am doing. So they will have confidence and they will start helping others. And nowadays what happened actually, people have no time and they want immediately something should be given to them just like spoon feeding. But it is not like that. First aid is a skill. Uh, it is a skill and you have to be very much thorough in the skill. Then only you will go ahead in your job. So if you don't have any skill, you can't uh, step ahead, but you have to. So on this auspicious day, I will be very happy. And I am really grateful to Dr. Venugopal. He was busy with her clinic, with her uh, work. But when I request him, just in the morning, I request, sir, today I want to do this uh, program. And you know, digitalization is the theme. And 
digitalization in fast state. It's very important. And you see how we have carried on. I have applied all the digitalization work through this uh, demonstration because digitalization cannot be done alone. So when Sir Dr. Reddy has given you the theoretical part, I have tried my level best to apply the digitalization and to show you how to do the things in proper way. So uh, it shows that first aid is not a theoretical yeah, really. term. And yes. You, you can add the theory with your practice. So you have to go for the training. And the, now I request, if you have any doubt, any question, uh, being a doctor, a cardiologist with us, you can ask questions. Now open to you all. The floor is open now. You can ask question, unmute your video, and unmute your uh, sound, and ask question, please. Yes, Sunita ji, bolie. Yes. Sunita ji from Ranchi. Somebody, if you have any doubt, you can ask me now. Yeah. And uh, this is a very informal. I think uh, this session is a very nice session. Uh, this is the first time I am uh, participating in this type of uh, uh, knowledge sharing or this first uh, this uh, digitized uh, uh, webinar. So if at all uh, you have some doubts also, you can ask me and uh, I, I request Madam to and encourage Madam to take these type of uh, sessions uh, in a regular basis so that uh, we will be getting, we will be doing this digital trans digital uh, tools to get more and more awareness about the first aid. And this is very important and uh, very nice step. Thank you, Madam. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, um, in the program, we are always having some problem. Today also we have got some problem. So for that reason, we have to, there is uh, one person that he is in the top. So we have to surrender before him. So I always request my small boys and girls, first doing any job, you just pray to God. I have prayed. But I don't know what happened. Few people, they started uh, misutilizing the program and they want to disturb it. And Bhagwan ne hamko bata diya aur madad kar liya. So now I request, uh, we are having uh, Dibyansu. Dibyansu, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I want sloka from you. And we'll finish with your sloka and uh, followed by uh, Dr. Jyoti Prakash Maharana, he will give the word of thanks. Madam, someone raised the hand. Okay, okay. Someone Some raised the hand. Want, his... want to ask some doubt? Okay. Jai yes, yes. Mr. Jai 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 Singh is... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jai Singh. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sir, Dr. Venu Gopal Reddy, sir. Namaskar. Sir, I would like to say that the question is not for us. Because your presentation was necessary for today. आज की समाज को बेहद जरूरत है ऐसे कार्यक्रम की तो इसलिए आपको बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद कहूंगा कि और मैडम को भी धन्यवाद इसलिए कहूंगा कि ढाई बजे कार्यक्रम की सूचना आई है और कोने-कोने से हम लोग जितना भी हो सके हम जुड़े हैं तो आपका जो प्रेजेंटेशन था वो काफी यूजफुल है हमारे लिए उपयोगी है और समाज को आज इसकी जरूरत है क्योंकि ऐसे कार्यक्रम ये पहले ही कार्यक्रम देख रहा हूं काफी पिछले 2 साल में तो मैं तो काफी जुड़ा जुड़ता हूं ऐसे कार्यक्रम से तो इसलिए आपका बार-बार धन्यवाद कहूंगा कि आप इस चीज को आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं तो बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद सर और मैडम का भी धन्यवाद कहेंगे कि यह बहुत ही अच्छा कार्यक्रम लेकर आए और बहुत कम समय में भी फिर भी कोने-कोने से जुड़ने की हमने कोशिश की है धन्यवाद सर थैंक यू सो मच मैडम यू मैडम अच्छा अच्छा आई रिक्वेस्ट मैडम टू स्टार्ट दिस अदर मींस कंटिन्यू दिस टाइप ऑफ वेबिनार्स सो दैट विथ प्रॉपर पीपीटीज आल्सो आई कैन कीप इन द मिडल एंड मेक एवरीवन मोर इनफॉरमेटिव देन ओनली सेइंग विथ माय माउथ आई विल कीप सम पिक्चर्स एंड फोटोग्राफ्स इन अ वेरी प्रॉपर एंड अ प्लान्ड मैनर नेक्स्ट टाइम आई विल व्हेन आई टेक दिस टाइप ऑफ सेशन थैंक यू सो मच मैडम यस यस Okay, and there are some formalities, sir. Please be with us for again uh, another five minutes only. Uh, Shadibyansu, sure, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ah, 
Please start your uh, sloka. Namaskar, ma'am. Yes, Namaskar. Om Tunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prabha Nirbhugnam Kurume Deva Sarva Karishu Sarvada Om Kadasi Talinti Tata Vipina Sangeeta Karavu Mudha Viri Nari Vadana Kamala Swada Madhupa Rama Sambhu Brahma Marafati Ganesha Chita Padu Jagannatha Swami Nayana Pathagami Bhava Tume Mujhe Sabye Venu Sira Sisi Kipin Chum Kati Tate Tulangnetrante Sajara Kataksam Vidadate Sadaya Sri Mandrundavana Basati Nila Parichayo Jagannatha Swami Nayana Pathagami Bhavatume Mahabodhestire Kanakaruchire Nira Sikare Vasan Prasadanta Sahaja Bala Bhadrena Balina Subhadrama Jastahe Sakara Sura Se Baba Saradu Yavanatha Swami Nayana Pathagami Baba Tumi Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it's time to present a small memento to our ready sir. Dr. Reddy has given us time, energy, and very beautiful presentation. And I'm really happy, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. This is a small memento for you, sir. Virtually, we are giving it to Thank you, you to remember much. this webinar <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> this webinar team will always remember you, sir, for your thank you, madam. Thank you. Attention to all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and madam. Now, okay, and now uh, I would like to present one certificate uh, to Sweetie Pradhan, and I request Dr. Benigopalji to present this certificate to our. Uh, Girl, sweetie Pradhan. Yes, sweetie. Uh, unmute your video and we can. Uh, and, uh, yes. With your blessing, Benigopalji, sir, uh, just head over yes, this certificate to sweetie Pradhan. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So okay. happy. Thank so, you. all the best. <laughs> can you see the Can you see the certificate, sir? Your recovery position is there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, madam. If the press, <laughs> and also if the patient, yeah, yeah, CPR and faster box are nice, available. It's, nice. it's nicely designed. <laughs> and uh, this is called digitalization. I have prepared very uh, within a very short span of time. And uh, um, yes, thanks to yes. Lord Jagannath, he has given us enough strength. Jai to Jagannath. do all sort of things. Uh, Jai Jagannath. Now it's time Jai to Jagannath. extend a heartfelt, a heartfelt thanks to our sir. May I request uh, Mr. Jyoti Prakash Maharana sir, the science teacher from Puri, uh, to extend a vote of thanks. Over to Mr. Maharana. Yes, sir. Thank you, madam. Oh, Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu, Mangalam Madhudanam, Mangalam Pundari Kakam, Mangalam Garudat Pajah, Madhava Madhava Vishnu, Madhava Madhava Hari, Smaranti Sadhava Nityam, Sarvakar Jesu Sumadhava. Honorable Dr. Kaliprasad Mishra, Chief Pattern, respected Dr. P. Venugopal Reddy, clinical cardiologist, 
Vijayanagaram, Andhra Pradesh, Chief Speaker of this webinar. Respected Dr. Navinda Patnaik, host and convener of this webinar, and all teachers, all students, and all audience present in this webinar. Very good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> Namaskar, sir. First of all, Namaskar. I would like to thank our Chief Speaker, Venugopal sir, for his wonderful and informative session regarding fasted and various strategies of life saving skills. As a science teacher and scoutmaster, I learned so many new things which will be helpful to teach my students, sir. Really, sir. Special thanks to Namita ma'am for arranging such an interesting webinar. And heartful thanks to all members present in this webinar for whom this webinar has become successful and popular. I request Venugopal sir to give us such type of inno innovative information regarding health issues when we need in future, sir. Lastly, I wish all of you to be clean and healthy and to maintain a happy and prosperous lifestyle. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Jagat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jai Jagat. <laughs> Jai Jagat. I have stopped the